another night yes. about Estonia and jazz, yes. and I was very surprised that you know so many about Estonian jazz music. The surprise was mine because I received the record by Tenno Naiso in uh, 77 from Vyacheslav Ganedin. He gave it uh, as a present to me. It was a trio with Toivo Wundt and a drummer, very good drummer. I can't remember now the name, but it was a black and white cover with uh, Tenno Naiso. And then, of course, I got interested. And because I wrote for Jazz Forum, I knew that Walter Royake represented Estonia in the, the editing staff of that magazine. And of course I wrote a chapter in my first book of essays, a chapter on Estonian jazz. It was a surprise for our readers, so uh, I got to know the, the stars of, of Estonian jazz, like uh, Lembit Sarsalu, like Tiet Paulus, like uh, Arvo Pilirog, uh, uh, Maggie, uh, some, some guys, a lot of other musicians. And of course I was very impressed because compared to the size of the country, the jazz achievements were unbelievable. Uh, they had big bands, they had uh, octet, they had... Uh, duos like uh, Billy Rog and Paulus and uh, very interesting musical uh, achievements and uh, that's why I kept in touch with uh, this scene uh, and uh, I'm, uh, I'm still giving AST as an example for other countries but whenever I deliver a lecture all over the world I give this example and I try to present some music. Unfortunately, there is not enough music on film, on DVD, so I must uh, uh, present only the audio uh, samples, but anyhow, uh, people are very impressed, generally. And uh, I, I must congratulate you also for the festivals. The festival in 1967 was uh, worldwide known. Of course, Willis Conover spoke about that. But the record was interesting, I have it. It was, uh, it included Vagif Mustafa Zadeh. It had a piece by Tenu so very interesting, and, and uh, other very strong musicians from that period. Are there being some Estonian jazz around here in, in, uh, in Romania? Romania. Yeah. Uh, unfortunately not, but it's, it's a very nice occasion to have you here. I'm very fond of that. Uh, there were some Romanians who played in Tallinn uh, on various occasions, and Lembit Sarsal who played here when he was young in the 1960s, he told me. But, uh, and also Rain Dunlap. <laughs> Rain Dunlap was in Cluj, I can remember that. He was uh, in 67, uh, he played with the Symphony Orchestra of Cluj, which is one of the strongest in Central Europe, actually. Yes. Rain Dunlap, he was uh, great, another great surprise for me, because he played the uh, normal uh, Concert. Maybe it was Prokofiev something, but anyhow, after that, the public was so enthusiastic that he started performing some uh, blues. He called them blues. He said Estonian blues, and then he played it on the piano. The people went mad because nobody who would have thought that uh, a classical pianist can play like that uh, in a in a jazz style. And of course I remembered him uh, also because of his appearance in 1977 to have such uh, fair hair, long hair and so on like you have now was a, a great, uh, uh, so to say, a provocation uh, for, uh, for the public and for the audience and, and for the official them, anyhow. Yes. But it was a very nice experience. I would, uh, I would like it. Uh, I would like to see a concert by, given by him now, if possible. <laughs> and what do you think about uh, the, the the importance of uh, International Jazz Day? It has been in Tallinn. Yeah. Uh, we have been celebrated uh, Jazz Month. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh, a few years already. We have yeah. a big jazz festival called Jazz Car. Yeah, yeah. Uh, a exactly in April. Yeah, I know because it's uh, Jazz Appreciation Month. I was invited twice in Montenegro. I'm a great fan of that part of, of the world. And I just came back from Montenegro. And uh, I think that if people have such organizers like you, for instance, you, I understood that you also organize a festival on uh, the on the island Muhu. 
Yes. Um, if you get uh, involved, if you have such people able to organize such such things, it's very very well for the uh, national identity of, of a certain country, for the uh, let's say uh, promotion of the spirit and of the creativity of that country all over the world. So it's it's a very good occasion also to strengthen the connection between the musicians and the public. As you saw last year, last night, you had 1,000 spectators who were very enthusiastic about your performance. Uh, anyhow, Cluj is uh, one of the strongest cultural centers in Europe, that's for sure. I can, uh, I can say it for sure because I, I can compare it with other countries and with, with other cities. Uh, and really, jazz has become, during the last decades, it has become a perfect vehicle to promote the identity of a certain nation. Yes, I've got the same uh, impressions yeah. on how yeah, yeah. our people have developed here, our jazz clubs. Uh, it's a very modern, uh, so how to say, design, mm -hmm. and everything looks like uh, you are really uh, on, on, you are touching a, a, a modern world as well. Mm -hmm. So, and you have been uh, uh, written and published a book about the, the Russian, yeah. uh, Russian no, no, modern have, jazz, yeah. what was interesting for me as well? Yeah, it's, uh, well, that was my first uh, collaboration to an international book in 1985. It's a long story because at that time we were not allowed to send texts uh, uh, across the borders of the country. But anyhow, it was published by Quartet Books in London. The title was The Russian Jazz New Identity. I have because I believed in, I believed very much in that project. I believed very much in those musicians uh, around Chekasin, uh, Ganelin, Tarasov, Kuryohin, Vapirov, a lot of avant-garde musicians who created uh, an effervescence that was uh, very, uh, how should I say, very um, influential, very. Uh, positive uh, in terms of that time, especially in the Baltic countries, but also in, in Georgia, in Armenia, and so on. But uh, as far as I can remember, I, I traveled in 1987 to Vilnius, I uh, lived in the house of Vladimir Tarasov, I met uh, Gedimina Slavinavicius, I met uh, Vitautas Labutis, I met uh, uh, Petras Vishnauskas, some of great musicians, all of them. And uh, in Riga also, I had a chance as a poet. I was translated into Latvian by their greatest poet, by uh, uh, Leons Briedis, uh, who is married to a Romanian from Chisinau. And he studied uh, our language, so he speaks perfect Romanian. He was a student in Chisinau. Uh, maybe you know that the language, the official language finally has been recognized in Basarabia as Romanian, which, which is the truth. So uh, it's, uh, uh, if you go here in front of this building, you have the statue of Mihai Eminescu, who is uh, our national poet and who is from Moldova. Of course, the half of Moldova that is still uh, in Romania. Uh, anyhow, uh, so that's... Uh, in my, in my opinion, that was a very important movement in the 70s, 80s. Uh, of course, it can be connected to Eastern Germany, to East, the East German musicians who were also very strongly inclined towards uh, avant-garde experiments and uh, uh, very daring. Uh, it was not only a musical, a musical trend, it was simply a cultural movement, uh, and it was also linked to the idea of liberty. So it was also a sort of uh, uh, liberation through, uh, through art, because of course the uh, music in general is, is, uh, is an abstract art, but, uh, but jazz especially is a free art. If you, if you are not free, you can't express yourself in, in, in jazz. It's yes. Obvious. Yes. And you also a uh, good friend with uh, Walter Oyagar? Uh, uh, as as we were good friends uh, when I was in Tallinn. Unfortunately, I was only once 
In 87, I managed to travel from Vilnius through Riga to Tallinn, and he lived in the eastern part, I suppose, where you had the Olympic uh, yes, uh, yes. something. Uh, it, it's a, a sort of a district. Yes, Pirita. Pirita, yes. It was in Pirita. I was in his house, his house. He played the piano. We spoke in German. It was very interesting. Yes, really. I liked him very much.